Hi friends, today I want to break down a few more photos that I've created recently, and I will be touching on such ideas as the importance of considering how close a subject should be in a given situation, as well as using elements to counterbalance the frame, like so. Uh, as well as how I chose to capture a sand dune, and the answer might be shocking. My, my producer told me to say that. Ralph, it did not go over well this time. Here's the first photo I want to take a look at. This one was taken with my iPhone. However, when I first arrived at this location, I started taking photos with my DSLR. I have found that... I found more and more situations where the iPhone seems to hold the correct expression that I'm going after within it, which I find to be interesting. But this photo was taken with a wide-angle lens. Hi, James from the future. About this photo being taken with a wide-angle lens, I realized after filming this video that it was actually not taken with a wide-angle lens. It was taken with the 50mm camera on my iPhone. I apologize for my miscalculation. I think the principles will still apply here. So let's all suspend our disbelief, like a, just like a bad movie plot with, with all sorts of plot armor and just, just horrible, convenient things happening. Let's just suspend our disbelief and pretend that this was taken with a fisheye lens, if you guys wouldn't mind. Thank you so much. Now back to past, James. How inexperienced you are. And one of the characteristics of a wide-angle lens is it allows more background and or more environment into the scene. Another characteristic of a wide-angle lens is it, the further a subject moves away from you in, this, uh, in the uh, scene, the more dramatically the person will become, or the, whatever your subject is, will become more insignificant. Now, all lenses do this to some extent. However, the, uh, the dynamic of a wide-angle lens is such that it, is, it does that dramatically. So this creates a conundrum. The conundrum is that you have to create proper separation and contrast between the subject or subjects and the rest of the scene while uh, while introducing all of these all of this environment to the scene and while uh, while engaging with this dynamic where the person the subject becomes more and more insignificant as they move further away in this case i chose to put the cyclist right up close and i actually picked a position and let the cyclist ride into that position. And this, I find this to be a good technique. If the cyclist was not properly close in this scene, the photo would have lost its strength. And I think there are uh, two areas of major strength for this photo, and that would be the environment, the, uh, all of the environment uh, being shown, the context that that creates, and the pleasing, the, the, the pleasing nature of that, as well as the um, closeness, the proper closeness of the subject. And there's also a separation, a strong separation between the subject and everything else in the frame, specifically cars. This is actually a very busy road. I got lucky here. I have another uh, photo where there was a car coming out of the back of the cyclist's head, and I think, I haven't looked at that photo yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be rather problematic. Uh, but in this case, I was able to create a lot of separation. It really helped the photo along. This photo is split up into two segments, where you have the bottom half being the road, the top half being the rest of the environment, the, the mountains in the background. I also, I also put myself at an elevated position, so the angle is higher. And because of that, so you can see I'm a little bit higher than the cyclist. Because of that, the angle is more intense and more dramatic. The blues in this scene, of uh, the sky and everything else that's blue in this scene, I, I post-processed it to be a bit more teal because I it, tend to enjoy that more than the sort of indigo that you get from skies. I think it worked out well here. <clears throat> this is a photo of my wife in uh, one of the deserts of, ne of Nevada, or one of the pieces of the desert in Nevada. And the deserts of Nevada are... Subtly different than the deserts in Utah, which I'm used to, and I find that difference to be fascinating. All deserts operate on this weird spectrum, but there are a lot more cacti and different types of plants and this and that in the deserts of Nevada. And one of the things I love about this photo is the dramatic light and shadows. You can see her shadow shoots across the bottom of the frame here, and this is because the sun is sort of at an angle. It's hitting her face 
straight on and uh, creating these long dramatic shadows. The, uh, this photo is also split up into two segments as well, perfectly down the middle. You have the top half, which is which are these cooler tones, and the bottom half, which are these warmer tones, and they contrast each other well. Her head is turned towards us slightly as well. If her head was looking away, I would have taken this photo and thrown it into the furnace of, of death. <clears throat> There's also a balance between my wife and the tree. There's a counterbalance effect here. Now, it's not perfect, but there also is another interesting effect happening where even though she is closer to the center, she is also closer to us. Uh, and even though that tree is further from the center, it's also further from us. So you have this four-dimensional balance kind of happening. And there's also an interesting subtle mirroring in the figures of my wife and the tree. And yes, uh, what I'm saying is that my wife looks like a tree. but She's a beautiful tree. This photo was also taken with my iPhone, and I placed the top of the dunes on the top third of the frame. Strategically, I decided to fill the bottom half of this frame with the vast expanse of the sand, and I really like how this came out. I also think it creates a, a stronger sense of scale. <clears throat> and the color and texture of the sand is absolutely wonderful for a photo and it works together well with skin tones uh, of all of all different variants there are some intriguing lines running through the scene as well and you'll find this on sand dunes that have been disturbed to some extent what's really interesting though is if you find a sand dune that is undisturbed it's one of the most beautiful things on the planet it's it is so aesthetically pleasing but in this case the lines actually add a lot you have a leading line running all the way up to the fr uh, the frame of, I think, my footsteps. And this creates uh, some dramatic depth in the scene, and, and leading lines are pleasing on their own. Uh, there's a very minimalistic composition and color palette to this photo, with just the sand dune in the sky being present. You have the warm tones of the, scan, uh, the sand dune and the cool tones of the sky uh, contrasting against each other. The tiny people in the frame also create a, a dramatic sense of scale because they are so tiny and this dune is so big, we do the math in our heads and come to a conclusion that this dune is very large. And uh, I, another thing that I love about this, the, the way that this photo worked out, and I took a, uh, quite a few frames to achieve this, is if you look very closely, the silhouetted figures are in perfect stride on the left-hand side. It's a little 10% detail that makes a dramatic difference. But that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to engage. Subscribing and checking out my shop would make you super neat. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.